you guys, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, my name is Lily. I'm a certified health and life coach and certified keto nutrition coach. And on this channel, I have lots of what I eat in a day videos and recipes, and I bring on different guests where we talk about ways to optimize human health. And so in this video, it's just a short video clip I had with Elliot Overton, who's a nutritional therapist over in the UK. And he's most passionate about and has more expertise and more research on oxalates. And so since that's his main topic, we did do a full video on oxalates what they are, what foods are highest in them, what happens when too much accumulates in the body, and then how uh, someone can go about kind of oxalate dumping and how to excrete some of these oxalates that can cause some really, some really severe health problems. So I will leave that video in the description, as well as all of Elliot's social media handles, his website, and links to his super informative and informational YouTube channel. But this is just a short clip where, I mean, we talked for over two hours. So one of the things that we ended up talking about just briefly was how if plants have toxins in them, why would someone even consume them? So that's going to be this. And at the end of this short little clip, I will give my kind of the things I agree with, the things I disagree with, and kind of talk more about it at the end. You know, and, and both you and I, we're not anti-plants. We both have plants in our diet. But when we talk about things like lectins, phytic acid, oxalates, it makes it, I mean, I would think, why would I even have any of these foods? Because even if I have a robust cell and the oxalate's not doing any damage as far as I can see, even if you're saying it's like shards of glass, even though it's not cutting right into it immediately, it would still be doing a little bit of damage over time. And so I would, you know, there's always the argument of why, why, why doesn't everybody just eat carnivore? Because obviously all these plants do have these plant toxins. So even if we're having a little bit, why would you ever say I'm going to have a little bit of poison? I mean, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, in theory, yeah, you could say, well, everyone could go carnivore and we'll all fix their health issues and things. I'll be honest, like I used to believe that, but it doesn't really work like that. <laughs> like I have seen that many people who get worse on carnivore. In fact, they don't do very well on it at all. Like they need some carbohydrate. Like there's no doubt about it, you know, particularly i think like the problem is is that taking some very good positive testimonials and applying that to the population at large and i think that's a lot of the case when it comes to carnivore is that there's a lot of this kind of seeing that it's worked wonders for some people and that's excellent and that it can work wonders for you know untold numbers of people but to say that that applies to everyone it's it 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 it, it it doesn't appreciate the nuances in, you know, those kind of individual or inherent differences that human beings have. Now, of course, you have the advocates who will say, well, it's a species specific diet. It's a species appropriate diet. And whilst I would agree, I think that our environment has changed to such an extent that I'm not sure that those rules still apply. And I think they might apply on a baser level, you know, as a very rough outline. It's like, okay, human beings as a general rule need to seem to need a lot of animal products like that means some kind of animal fat that means some kind of organs potentially and copious amounts of either fish or red meat it seems that human beings as a general rule can do do well with any combination of those and i think that as also as a general rule i don't think it's any kind of coincidence that a lot of populations do eat plants, even if they are very meat heavy, they still consume some kinds of plants when they're available, you know? So I was, I, I mean, I completely agree. And I've kind of been I've trying to be work this out for years, you know, I still haven't con come to a, a solid conclusion. Like I, I'm, I'm just as in the dark as you are by the sounds of things. It's like, it makes sense in theory that, okay, if these things are toxic, then that you know then we should be able to survive without them and we should no, we shouldn't eat them I, I i don't think i don't think they're toxic for everyone that's one thing i do think there's benefits that can be gotten in fact i think that if someone's in in, in in a kind of moderately good good state then actually some of these toxins found in plants can actually have beneficial effects right. whilst i don't know of any beneficial effect of oxalate i do think that there are beneficial effects of and kind of in, in disagreement with paul saladino here you know he talks about how you know um uh, plant derived hormesis is is not really all that good and in fact environmental hormesis is, is much better in the form of like cold therapy and sauna and exercise well i think the body of literature is is so vast that to say that plants although they have a minor level of toxicity that there's no benefit from that well 
I've used clinically applications like curcumin, green tea extract, which are toxic at the cellular level, but they seem to help. You know, they actually exert some positive anti-inflammatory effects. So I think that, you know, this concept that kind of plants are toxic, I think that if someone's system is highly compromised, severely compromised, they've got less defense against that. They've got less of an ability to utilize that stressor as a positive you know, this concept of hormesis be, being a stressor actually spurs you on to improve your own endogenous defenses. I think if someone's severely compromised, then um, then in that situation, they can't derive that kind of benefit from the stressor. But I think probably for the majority of people who aren't in a very bad situation, those stressors do have some kind of a net positive effect in some cases or a net neutral effect. I don't think that, you know, they are kind of causing problems if they're eaten in small amounts or if they eat as relish you know for instance herbs and spices and things with with the meat i have zero problem with that kind of stuff of course you know under most kinds of circumstances now um what you were saying about um why doesn't everyone eat carnivore you know this concept of there being a higher ratio of animal foods is is really important i think that that applies to everyone i really do as long as they can digest that properly um but you know with regards to like full-blown hardcore carnivore i mean for people i think it's it's it it seems to be at least and this is just my take so take it for what it's worth um and it, it seems from my impression that probably the vast majority of conditions could benefit from this and these are the more common conditions like um you know cardiovascular diseases diabetes, metabolic syndrome, obesity, um, anxiety disorders, depression, gut disorders, that kind of thing, right? The really common conditions, which afflict most people, they seem to respond very well to carnival. At least most of them do. Contrary to what people um, would, uh, would think. Indeed, right? Indeed, yeah. And it is really, it, it can be, in some cases, a miraculous intervention. And I've seen it, you know, countless times. That being said, I would say that there are a specific set of conditions which don't seem to respond all that well to carnivore, like the complex conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, ME, um, multiple chemical sensitivity, um, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, uh, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and mass cell activation syndrome, and these kind of collection of what, what referred to as uh, sometimes like environmentally mediated diseases, which oftentimes factor in, they have like mold can be an issue, chronic infection can be an issue, stealth infection, Lyme disease, severe toxicity, heavy metal toxicities, chemical toxicities, these kinds of things, which for some reason I, t I tend to I tend to attract quite a lot of these people. So these make up the majority of the people who I see. I don't really see that many people with diabetes or anything like that. I see these people. Now, you know, more often than not, carnivore diets make them feel terrible. They make them feel terrible. And I think that for these people, well, I'm, I'm certain for these people, carbohydrate as a general rule, they need some. And I think sometimes when the mitochondria is so compromised, like the ability to, to utilize fat for fuel is so compromised that actually short you know fast burning carbohydrate really 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 is necessary for this person to be able to get out, out of bed in the morning you know so i think you know whilst i'm probably in, cre in complete agreement um that a carnival diet is great and that plant foods are generally pretty bad under certain certain circumstances i think that some people from what i've seen anyway i think that some people need them at least in the short term uh and that kind of yeah that that's that's my position on it so i yeah like i mentioned our main conversation was about oxalates and so i didn't want to spend the time talking uh directly about this question with him but i agree with the majority of things that he said there are a couple of things that i just wanted to re-emphasize in a different way but he said that somebody may have a harder time healing with carnivore if they have Lyme disease or heavy metal toxicity. And maybe that is the case, but I wanted to just throw it out there that I do know somebody who had Lyme's and cured their Lyme's by eating carnivore. And in the same sense, when it comes to heavy metal toxicity, somebody may have diabetes, but they also might have heavy metal toxicity, but that doesn't mean that eating carnivore is not going to help heal them in certain ways. So anyway, I just wanted to add that. And then I do agree that, you know, why should somebody have plants if they have toxins in them? This is a question I'm often asked, 
but there's toxins in meat, there's toxins in fish, there's toxins in eggs, there's toxins in water, there's toxins in everything. So the cons to plant foods are that they have toxins in them, but the pros are that they do have vitamins and minerals and nutrition. Other people, a pro may be that they add variety, they add flavor. A con, depending on who you are, if somebody has high blood sugars, then maybe certain fruits might want to be avoided. Or for somebody, if they have leaky gut or ulcerative colitis, then they may want to avoid certain vegetables because, again, that's maybe going to add more cons than, than the pros. Other people, maybe the cons to having plant foods are that they it takes more time to prepare them properly so that way they can access the vitamins and minerals in them. There's, I mean, at the end of the day, any vitamin and mineral someone's looking for can be found in animal foods. But if somebody wants to have plant foods and it works for them, then, you know, similarly to when I go to the gym and I get the con of small micro tears in my muscle fibers, the pro is that I'm building my muscles. So while there are toxins in plants, there also are toxins in everything, but there are also pros to plants. It just depends on if somebody even wants to include them, maybe they don't even like the taste of them and they know that they can get all the vitamins and minerals they need from animal foods. Um, but in general, if, if people, it just depends on what, what people's goals are and where people are in their health journey if the small amounts of toxins in plants are going to do more damage than good. So I hope you got some good value out of this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. That way this information reaches more people. And if you missed the full conversation I had with Elliot, I'll leave it right here. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I will see you in the next video.